Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to be giving you an overview of the new improvements for Character Creator 1.5. So this is an awesome new update with lots of highly expected features for Character Creator 1.5. Um, it's opened the door for a lot of Character Creator asset creation. Uh, you're now able to uh, build a robust design pipeline uh, to all major industry 3D tools. Uh, it gives you full control over mesh editing and it's, it's self-contained. It's a fully featured tool. You don't even need 3D Exchange or anything like that. No need to open it or anything. So I'm going to be introducing you to the new features, the new and improved features for Character Creator 1.5. So here's a quick summary before we get into the nitty gritty. One of the biggest new features is the ability to import and export FBX files. So this is actually pretty huge. It allows you to design your own Character Creator assets and directly export to FBX uh, from Character Creator. It also comes with uh, three FBX uh, templates, the male, female, and neutral templates for cloth design for your characters. Uh, you can custom edit cloth, hair, gloves, shoes, and accessories. We'll have another tutorial series that de goes into detail on that. Uh, we spent a lot of time, huge effort, on making Character Creator now compatible with LightWave, Blender, Max, Maya, Cinema 4D, and uh, so on and so forth. So this allows you to have a seamless uh, pipeline between Character Creator and your favorite tools. You now have the ability to customize your cloth layer editing. So if you want to wear your underwear outside like Superman, you can go ahead and do so by adjusting the layers on your character. You can have shoes above the pants or below the pants, and you can also save out your own layer settings as well. In addition to that, we also have the ability to edit your clothing mesh. Uh, so you can get perfect multi-layer outfit conformity. Uh, you can fix all those uh, stubborn conformity issues that uh, do not correct themselves when you use conform or any of those other tools. You can custom edit your mesh or hide mesh and all sorts of other stuff, which we'll get into in a little bit more detail later. Another awesome feature is the ability to have X-ray and textured wireframe view modes. So these are really useful when you're uh, checking out layer relation uh, on your character. You can kind of see beneath the layers and what's happening underneath. And one of the coolest new features, I think, is the ability to customize your calibration poses. So you can keep the pose now when you're uh, editing. Uh, the custom calibration pose will remain there after you exit the window. Uh, you can load your own custom poses from iMotions as well. And you can also use the Motion Layer Editor tool to customize your calibration pose using Human IK, which is pretty cool. And last but not least, we have the ability now in Character Creator to adjust floor contact points for your hand and your feet, as well as custom texture editing and loading physics weight maps, all within Character Creator. And the first thing we're going to talk about is the much-awaited FBX import and export. So we have our character right here on the screen, uh, this uh, female character right here. Um, before I do that though, there's a really cool little new feature that you can use, uh, is the ability to replace the costume of your character on the screen. So although this character looks nice and uh, professional with her outfit, what we're going to do is we're going to replace it with something else. And I'm going to find that on my desktop. I have this uh, demo uh, character creator project. So when now when you import in a character creator project, I can just drag it onto my scene, you have the option to load the project or replace the costume. So when you replace the costume, your character's hair and skin and everything like that will remain the same, but you'll have a totally different costume. So that's a really nice new feature that we can use. So back on track to the ability to import and export FBX files. So if you don't have the pipeline version of 3D Exchange, if you don't have that license, you're not going to be able to export your character with the clothing. You're going to be limited to the nude uh, models that are included with Character Creator. So you will be able to export FBX, but only the two naked characters. So keep that in mind. You need the pipeline version to export anything with all of these uh, clothing items. All right, so what you want to do is go to File and Export to FBX and Clothed Character. And we can just export to our desktop. We'll call her like a lady, you know, for lack of a better name. And you have the option to delete hidden meshes, make it lightweight compatible, and rename duplicated bones. So we've spent a huge amount of effort here to make Character Creator compatible with LightWave, Blender, Maya, Max, Cinema 4D, and all these programs. We've made a huge effort to make our tool more compatible with theirs. So for those of you who use those tools, this is kind of a bonus for you guys. Uh, Unreal as well here, you have the option to uh, rename duplicated bone. We're not going to include any motions in this, although you can do that if you'd like. We're going to go ahead and press OK. And once we've exported that FBX file, we can go to our desktop and take a look. So now we have this lady.fbx, but we also have an FBX key file. Now the FBX fee, uh, XBX key file contains layer, bone scale, hide mesh, and morph info in it as well. 
as a DRM protection. So when you import your FBX file back into Character Creator, you're going to need this FBX file to keep all that information and import it in properly. So keep that in mind. It'll always export this little uh, file for you there as well. So we have this lady.fbx and generally the workflow is what you'd want to do to modify your mesh is take this fbx file and click and drag it into a program like a Maya LT which I have open right now. Now you can be using Mudbox, uh, Sculptress, uh, ZBrush, whatever program you have. Uh, but I'm just going to be using Maya LT because I happen to have this installed on my uh, on my laptop here. And you can see the uh, file right here. You can modify the mesh with all your sculpting tools and everything like that and then you'd want to export into FBX format. We're not going to cover that in this uh, brief overview, obviously, but uh, what you'd want to do is you want to modify the mesh, uh, whether it be the character skin mesh or the uh, clothing mesh. Uh, you can create your own custom clothing and uh, rig it, uh, or rather uh, skin it to your character. That's a whole other uh, can of worms. We're not going to open that right now. But we can just close this down. What you want to do is export it, and then you would re-import in the same FBX file. Um, maybe you want to name it lady2.fbx or whatever. In this case, we're just going to import in lady.fbx. It's the same file since we're not doing any modifications actually here. So you can just click and drag it into your scene. You can also go file import fbx and it'll automatically find if it's in the same folder your fbx key file right here and if it's the same name. If not, you'll have to choose it. Uh, you can just choose a uh, default new template for gloves and shoes. That's fine. And press OK. And then it'll come up with this uh, window right here. Now we have other tutorials that go into a lot more detail on all the things I'm covering here. This is just a brief overview, a summary of the new features. So we'll have more detailed tutorials for each individual uh, tool and uh, feature that I'm going through here. So this is where you set your layers, basically. And that's pretty much all done here for us. So let's press OK. So then what will happen is it'll import in your FBX file that you've modified and whatnot. And you can see we have a little issue down here with these shoes. We, when we imported it, we had the socks actually above the shoe layer. So if you want to fix that, we can really easily edit the layer uh, hierarchy. So let's go into uh, View, our window rather, and Cloth Layer Settings. And let's expand this a little bit so we can see it a little bit better. And uh, we have a tutorial that goes into more depth on this, obviously. But all I want to do here, a quick fix, you can see my basketball shoes are below my soccer socks. We want it the other way around. I'm going to click and drag this item to above my soccer socks and then run collision. And when you're doing that, Shazam, you have the uh, shoes where they're supposed to be over top of the socks, although the socks maybe want to be below the uh, tights. But you can just repeat the same process with the shoe or with the socks and the tights and you get this at the same result that I just showed you. So that's how you can really easily modify the layers. And like I mentioned, we have other tutorials that go into more detail on that. Let's take a look at the custom uh, uh, calibration poses as well. So another new feature is the ability to go up here to calibrate and you can choose these calibration motions like this one, uh, this one right here, any of these calibration motions. And if you exit the uh, window, now they remain that way. So what you can do is you can, uh, you know, modify them. Uh, you can even add in your own custom calibration pose if you import in an iMotion file from iClone. So I happen to have one on my desktop. Uh, this test pose right here, it's an iClone motion file. So I'm going to click and drag this onto my character in Character Creator. And she's going to be in that custom sexy pose right here, this custom dancing pose right here. So again, you can customize your poses. You can use also on top of that the pose editing tool. So we'll go up here to edit and pose editing. You can also use the end hotkey and you can use the pose editing tool just like the motion key editor in uh, iClone. And you can take your character and move them according to a uh, human IK. Uh, we take our character's uh, waist. We can, you know, move her around like that you can see the human IK at work right there but uh, you know that's for basic uh, for different motions that maybe you want your characters having mesh breakthrough on their clothing and you want to test them out so that's how you can add uh, custom calibration poses and also customize your own within the program so let's take a look now at mesh editing which is one of the coolest features in my opinion uh, new features in character creator 1.5 so say for example you have a situation like this where you can see the shorts are kind of uh, Rather, the tights are breaking through the shorts right there, and maybe you want to get rid of that. You want to make sure that your shorts are big enough. Well, generally, what you do before is you'd uh, right-click. Uh, you can actually now right-click, and you can select any item right here. You can select the lady, which is the character's skin mesh, the cat suit, which is the tight suit right here, or the low-rise shorts. So when you right-click, you can select all of those. So I'm right-clicking, selecting the shorts, going to conform, and you really want to calculate collision. But maybe that doesn't have the results you want, so you need to customize your mesh. You need to edit it. Uh, properly in specific places. 
So to do that, with your item selected, your clothing item selected, go up here to Edit, and you want to go down to the bottom and find Edit Mesh Mode. Now with Edit Mesh Mode, what you can do, uh, oops, we kind of went on a whirlwind there. What you can do is you can select individual faces of your mesh right here. So I can hold Control and select more faces than one. So I'm going to select all the faces that I think need to be extruded a little bit. Press the W hotkey, and I can just bring those out a little bit, just like this. All right, and we can uh, you know bring them up a little bit, and we just had a little spot fix right there. We can take this one as well, uh, bring that up over here. Again, same thing. And basically, that's an easy and quick way to make sure there's no mesh breakage um, for any particular part of your motion. And there's all sorts of other features here with the edit mesh mode. We have a separate tutorial that goes into a lot more detail on that. But I just wanted to show you that as a brief overview here. You can edit at edit mesh mode right here, or exit edit mesh mode rather. And on that topic, another option that you have is the ability to add X-ray and texture wireframe view mode. So if we focus in on, say, this uh, shirt that's tied around her waist, for example, say we wanted to take a look at the meshes below that shirt. Uh, what we need to do is go to our scene manager right here, and we can, uh, you know, uh, just click here and select our tied up shirt. Uh, right click there rather and select our tied up shirt. And now we have the option to go to uh, wireframe or shaded mode. You can see the wireframe on top of the, uh, the shading, the shaded mode. We can also go to uh, x-ray mode as well. And now with x-ray mode you can see the layers of cloth below it. And we have the hidden mesh right here obviously because we don't really need to see it. Just saving resources. But this is a good way to take a look at the meshes below uh, the layers that you're currently editing using that x-ray mode. Alright, so we'll just go back to uh, normal mode here. And finally, the last three features, we have the ability to adjust uh, floor contact. So with floor contact, uh, you can see right now we're okay right here. Again, we have a separate tutorial on it. We can go up to uh, uh, floor contact for uh, foot and hand, and uh, you can select auto adjust contact points, or you can select auto calculate contact points. And you can see that'll bring it right up to snuff right there, according to our particular motion. And you can go into more detail right there with foot contact, uh, hand contact, and you can adjust the contact points individually. We'll just go ahead and close this right now. We're not going to do that. And it'll take us into a T-pose right here again. And you can see the, uh, the contact points. We're not going to worry too much about that. Just wanted to kind of show you the possibility. Let's get out of here and uh, give her a nice uh, calibration pose. Let's give her that feminine pose again there. This one right here. All right. Looking pretty good. And the last two little features here, you can select uh, any part like this uh, cat suit right here, for example, or maybe let's uh, right click and select our uh, tied up shirt. So say, for example, we wanted to assign a weight map to our tied up shirt. Well, now we can do that. We can go up here. There's a physics option now. You can uh, choose a weight map for your uh, um, op for your uh, item right there. I think we selected the wrong item. We had the cat suit selected. So let's try and select our tied up shirt there. And a weight map, you can see it uh, has a diffuse map and you want to uh, put in a weight map right here, you can do that. Feel free to add a custom weight map in Character Creator. And you can also edit the uh, material as well. There's also uh, some more material uh, editing options here. Um, all your basic options that you can import in here, bump map, diffuse, and everything like that. So that's really about all there is for the new features in Character Creator 1.5. Again, an awesome new pipeline that allows you to easily uh, import and export uh, your own assets onto your character creator characters, uh, your clothing, anything like that. You can design your clothing in any tool you're more familiar with or uh, use very often. Um, so that's about it. Uh, we'll have other tutorials on character creator in the future. But for now, just check out our forums over at forum.relusion.com and I will see you in the next video.